Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and welcome to Short Anxiety Reduction. Number five, I do believe. Uh, please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. If you're watching on YouTube, please only watch when you can safely close your eyes. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. So, the point behind these short anxiety reductions is a bit of uh, a little bit of advice, a little bit of a few techniques. A little bit of focusing on how you're feeling right now. A bit of acceptance that maybe your body and your mind needs changes to occur. So, you know, there's different types of anxiety causes. I'm not an expert, but I've experienced it and I know a bit about this stuff. And I've had lots of different varieties of anxiety, going back to when I was a child. Uh, but at the time, I didn't know it was anxiety. I didn't know anything about stress. Uh, so you can have anxiety due to stress which is due to your lifestyle so maybe we can look at lifestyle today and it's probably the most annoying topic <laughs> possibly because you could now you're thinking maybe oh god he's going to start lecturing us about how we should live and if you knew a bit about me, uh, you'd know that I'm in no position to lecture anybody about their lifestyle. But we can discuss it. And I have learnt some things about um, how changing lifestyle can make a difference to uh, levels of anxiety and stress and reducing it at the same time and I'll be very honest with you there are things that I've refused to change and there's been no use to me it's actually possibly made things worse for me at times because I refused to make those changes because I perhaps read it in a book and I read a lot of books on anxiety and stress lots and lots of books uh, and I thought I'll be honest I thought bollocks bollocks to them I'm not giving up alcohol I'm not giving up uh, that you know I work hard I just, I'm not going to give up the things that I enjoy doing um, but over the years I realised and I learned that actually it's not necessarily about giving up I have been abstinent from various things at various times. I've tested lots of different ways to reduce the anxiety, including dietary ways, uh, lifestyle ways, uh, meditation, exercise. Uh, hip hypnosis is something that I've been using for 20 years uh, when I first started learning it. But I started meditating back in 1994. I think but didn't really get into it until 2002 so it took you know before I really sort of started to learn properly with other people before that it was just for books so lifestyle and even but when I say the word it bores me I'll be honest with you 
This might be a very, very short session because it's a boring subject in a way, but it's very, very important. And I think that's why so many books on anxiety relief can be really boring and it can be really uh, very samey as well as this will be I suppose but I don't think anybody likes to be told what to do apart from people that are into being told what to do you know S&M or I don't know whatever some people love being told what to do isn't it? but I think generally generally in maybe in the west I don't know about other parts of the world generally in my experience people do not like being told what to do especially when you've paid money for a book and it's telling you you need to stop drinking stop taking drugs stop whatever it is stop smoking you need to exercise regularly you need to eat good food and you need to do all this stuff and of course all that stuff is really important it's really good advice but when it's presented in a you must do this I find that my uh, it gets my back up I think that's the, the, probably the correct term I react to that Anyone saying that, you know, this is what I should do. You should do this. And it's not always helpful. It's definitely not helpful to feel reactive to it. And that's on top of the anxiety and the stress. Uh, to be told, to have that, and I'm going, this, I'm, I'm going from a, a realistic angle not a spiritual um, I don't have a spiritual bone in my body I don't think I'm not going from a spiritual angle I'm not going from a, a caring angle although I do care but it's it's more of a realistic angle someone tells you something that you should do that will help and it's so easy I've been there, I've, I've done it, I've been both ends of the stick. Both ends of the shit stick, as they call it. I've been the person trying to help someone, saying, have you tried this? Knowing that, you know, I've studied this thing, I've spent thousands of pounds, thousands of my hours uh, learning this stuff and trying to offer a little bit of help. And I see their eyes glaze over. And I know for a fact they're not going to do it, even if it's the most simple thing, because they didn't ask for my help. They didn't ask me to give them any advice. It's not what they were asking for, they just wanted to be heard. And I've also been on the other end of it as well where someone's I've just telling someone no, I'm just having a moan or someone said how are you and I'm just saying well you know I'm having issues with this they say have you tried Reiki or have you tried and it's so well intentioned as well it's kindness they're being kind but the amount sometimes I think well you know what the amount of suffering I've gone through I've tried lots of different things and if you think that that is going to work after I've tried all these other things and that can go on in your head and it's not helpful because if you've tried well first of all you've never tried everything none of us have we're lying to ourselves if we say we've tried everything You'd have to be alive a thousand life, lifetimes to try everything because everything hasn't even been discovered yet. So lifestyle 
it's about I suppose it's about accepting that you have choices what you do you decide how you live your life but there are some facts alcohol is not very good for anxiety or stress it might feel it at the time these are facts but they're not very they're not very welcome facts to someone that likes to drink alcohol and if you tell someone that likes to drink alcohol that they should you know they need to cut down or stop drinking for a while I'm guessing that their anxiety level is going to increase as will their anger um In fact, their anxiety level may decrease if their anger increases because they're now focusing on outside that energy. That anger is outside rather than faced at themselves. So it's about being gentle with it. I do try and do that with my sessions. I try and be gentle, try and maybe skirt around the subject a little bit just dance around it in a little a little tutu just uh you know just gently softly like a swan and there may be things that you can change there's things I I needed to change and I did Uh, I don't drink alcohol anymore but that's a choice and that's what this needs to be about I don't care what your lifestyle is and I don't care if you change it or not it makes no difference to me it does not affect me or my life but I'm making a session about helping with anxiety reduction so what you do doesn't personally affect me but it's going to affect someone else and it affects you Just like what I do, it's not going to affect you. So it's taking that personal responsibility. With alcohol, I find, and I know it's it's a bit of a a self-help cliche, but alcohol is a depressant. Well, yeah and no. I mean, physio- physiologically, yeah, to a degree. But you know what? Millions of people love alcohol and they feel brilliant when they drink alcohol. And some people, if they don't drink too much, are fine the next day as well. Um so I think it's a bit unfair to generalise and picking on uh, saying this with smoking certain things you know it all has some things can be really really dangerous some things can be fun and it all depends on the situation the person and all that stuff I'm not going to be here to moralistically judge anybody I will judge, but I'll do it afterwards. Once the record is finished, I'll just be judging, sitting here, angry and judging everyone <laughs> for doing, for living differently to me. Oh, it's a lovely lifestyle to lead, yeah. So, your lifestyle, sometimes when making small changes, can have a big impact. So I'll give you some of the some of the things that uh, I've done and some things that I know people have done that can help. And this is, you can get this in any book, it's not very interesting, but it's possibly useful. The top of the list, <clears throat> I would put meditation. Actually, the top of the list, I would put listening to me. because um, my ego told me to put that down there. 
So top of the list, listening to me. Then in the real world, meditation. I would advise going to meditation classes. You can learn stuff online, of course you can. It's pretty much everything's available on YouTube to learn. Um, so yeah, you got, I think the only thing, that, they don't have classes on how to be a troll, which you think you would, there would be, wouldn't you? Considering how many trolls there are out there. Uh, so meditation, go to a local group if you can. You get to meet new people, and in my experience, people that go to meditation classes, when they first start going, is due to anxiety and stress. Uh, so to calm themselves, to calm their mind, to calm their body. So you get to, it's not necessarily getting to meet like-minded people, but sometimes it's nice to meet people that have a degree of understanding a little bit of understanding about, you know, the uh, life changes. Because I think we're talking about lifestyle here, lifestyle changes. And it could be like, oh, I'm not interested, I don't care, I don't want to hear about that, I don't want no lifestyle changes. Well, if you've got anxiety, you know, your lifestyle has changed. And you've had no choice in the matter. Extreme anxiety and stress has changed the style of your life. As it did with me. As it still does sometimes. You know? So the idea of I'm not changing my lifestyle. It's already been changed. It's already changed. So it's a case of, are you going to have the anxiety and the stress control your lifestyle? Or are you going to take that control back? So you've got meditation, hypnosis, uh, maybe self-hypnosis. Uh, a lot of that you can do, you know, just tell yourself, well, I'll go through it all in future sessions and stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's... Regular actions, regular, doing something regularly can make a difference. Uh, so for diet can have a difference, you know, eating, uh, you know, a cooked meal, eating regularly. Um, five, sleeping habits. Sleeping well, having a kind of a, you know, that's really important. And what other things? Exercise, of course. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to train for the marathon. It can be gentle exercise. It can be just walking. It can be doing a few push-ups and sit-ups. It can be phys just physically moving your body. It can have a, a big impact to your well-being. There's lots of other things. I won't go through them all because... I try and keep this uh, recording to about 20 minutes. The most important lifestyle change is to just be kind to yourself. And if there's only one sentence that you ever remember in your life, it's that, be kind to yourself. It could involve having a bath. It could involve, you know, uh, to relax. It could involve reading a book. It could involve having a cuddle. It could involve going for a meal. It could involve anything. Something that makes you feel good. Which is the antidote to anxiety. So that's the end of this session. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I'll, you know, speak to you next time. Bye.